everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hello, welcome back. Hope you're having a nice day. I sure am. Leaves are sprouting on all of the trees in my neighborhood, so it's very green outside. There are also flowers blooming in reds and whites and purples, and it feels just so nice to be outside. We just bought a hammock that can go between two trees in our backyard, and I can't wait to go lay in it right after I record this episode. Hope you are enjoying the time outside at this time of year. I think it's nice everywhere, maybe. Maybe it's fall in some places and spring here. In any case, let's get to today's lesson. This is going to be a two part lesson. In part one, which is the episode you're currently listening to, I'll tell you a joke. We'll do some pronunciation exercises and we'll go through the very common expression to hit rock bottom. In part two, which will be posted soon, we'll use the story of Titanic as a canvas to work on irregular verbs. It's not a typical long culture lesson like I normally have in part two. And I think it's just better that way because I think you know the story of the Titanic already. You know the majestic ship, the one that hit an iceberg and sank to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. So in part two, the lesson is going to focus more on grammar. It's an experiment, and I think it's pretty cool. I can't wait to hear what you think, so stay tuned for that. Before we get to today's lesson, I'd like to do a recap. Last month, I posted episode 162 about reduplications, which are phrases like super duper, handy dandy, and lovey dovey. In English, we often say these things to give a playful and poetic effect to the way we speak. I think they're fun. So I asked you, all of you on Spotify, they have a polls section now. And I posted a poll asking if reduplications exist in your native language. Over 1,000 of you responded, and 67% said yes, which is really cool. Rabu Nowu wrote that gadka szmatka means chit chat in Polish. Jutta Kempf wrote that in German. They also use mishmash and pee-pee like in English. And she came up with a bunch of other reduplications. One that I particularly liked was crimscrams, which are like odds and ends in English, little random miscellaneous objects. We have a drawer in our house filled with odds and ends, or as you say in German, crimscrams. Excuse my pronunciation, by the way. (laughs) Amir said in Persian, or Farsi, it's very common, quote, you can do it with almost every word, and most of the times it's with the letter M. Some are dava mava, fight, kacholo mocholo, a little, tala mala, meaning gold, I could keep going. It was so fun reading through all of your examples in so many different languages. Thank you for everyone taking the time to write. I'd also like to give one big shout out to Fernando from Rio, who sent $15 worth of coffee to me and said that I made learning reduplications, quote, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Well, Fernando, thank you so much. I'm not sure where you learned easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's so funny. I'd forgotten about that one. And it's a perfect example of a reduplication. Easy peasy lemon squeezy means 
easy. Let's go ahead and begin today's episode. And as usual, we'll start with a joke. Are you ready? What do you call a rock that never goes to school? Do you know? A skipping stone. <laughs> do you get it? To skip school means to intentionally avoid attending class or school activities without permission or a valid excuse. Lucas used to skip school a lot. I didn't. A skipping stone, however, is a flat, smooth stone that is thrown horizontally across the surface of a body of water, such as a pond, lake, or river, in a way that it bounces or skips along the water multiple times before sinking. Lucas can make a stone skip about 10 times before it sinks. It's pretty impressive, if I must say so. So you hear the wordplay in this joke. Let's hear it one more time. What do you call a rock that never goes to school? A skipping stone. <laughs> I know some of you don't think these jokes are funny. That's okay. Explaining a joke always kind of ruins it, <laughs> in my opinion. But the point is we're learning double meanings of words. It's a learning experience, even if you don't find it funny. On another note, there are a few other ways to say to skip school or to skip class. Some people say to play hooky. My dad always says that. Or if you go to school in the morning, but for some reason you don't go to class and you don't have a good reason for it, we'd say you ditched class. To ditch or skip class are sort of synonymous. Let's move to the expression of the day, which is to hit rock bottom. This expression is extremely common. We'll start by going through the definitions of each word. To hit is a verb, and generally it means to strike with force. I just hit my palm with my other hand. It can also mean to come into contact forcefully with someone or something. I accidentally hit the woman with my purse. All right, rock is a noun, and it's the same as stone, really. It's a hard, solid substance often made of minerals. For example, granite, sandstone, and limestone. We stopped by the river and ate lunch on a big rock. Rocks can vary in size and in their appearance. You might have igneous rocks or metamorphic rocks, sedimentary rocks. I think those are the three I remember from my geology classes in college. Bottom is the lowest point or part, the base or lowest part of something. It's the opposite of top. I found my missing sock at the bottom of my daughter's drawer. To hit rock bottom as an expression has been used for centuries. Imagine if you look into a hole in the ground and see rock at the bottom. If you hit rock bottom, you can't go any lower. As an expression, to hit rock bottom is used when one reaches the lowest possible point in one's life or in a situation. When someone hits rock bottom, they may feel like they have reached the worst condition they've ever been in. Maybe they're experiencing extreme adversity financial or emotional despair, maybe a physical hardship, or maybe a failure, a company failure, a life failure. Whatever the situation is, it can feel very overwhelming. When someone hits rock bottom, it gives the idea that the only way to go is up. So for many, it can be a turning point. It may force someone to reevaluate their circumstances and make positive changes in their life. Let's go through some examples to see how you can use this in different contexts. 
Example number one. Before creating the iconic Disney brand, Walt Disney faced numerous setbacks and failures. One of his lowest points came when he was fired from a newspaper company for lacking creativity. But it was when his first animation company went bankrupt that Walt Disney hit rock bottom. After struggling to find success in California, he eventually created Mickey Mouse with the help of Ub Iwerks and established Disney Studios. The rest is history, right? So he hit rock bottom in that moment of failure, but it was also a turning point for him, right? Great things came after he persevered. Example number two, Oprah Winfrey is an American talk show host, actress, producer, philanthropist. She's everything. But before becoming famous, Oprah endured a difficult childhood. She was impoverished and abused. In fact, she admitted that she considered suicide when she was impregnated by her uncle at 14. At 14 or whatever, where you end up with your father. How did was I it? hit rock bottom, yeah. actually. I hit rock bottom. I became pregnant. By the uncle? Or, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I came, became pregnant and hid the pregnancy. I had intended to kill myself, actually. It was the lowest point in her life. But she pushed through it. And eventually, Oprah created the Oprah Winfrey Show which became one of the most successful television programs in U.S. history. Example number three. In the fall of 2015, I hit rock bottom. My business partners and I agreed that our language business had failed. So mentally, I wasn't very happy. Then, as if the universe wanted to make things worse, I had a severe allergic reaction to mango. The peel of mango specifically. I was living in South America at the time and there was a big mango tree in my backyard. I didn't think the reaction would be so bad. At the same time, I got Zika. Remember that mosquito virus? Yeah, I tested positive for that. And then to top it all off, the roof on the little shack building I was in collapsed in the night and rain poured on top of me and all of my stuff. This was all in the same week. I hit rock bottom. Honestly, it was a very hard time in my life. And I remember thinking, what in the world am I going to do now? Of course, I'm still alive. It was actually a turning point for me too. It's when I met Lucas. I think in those moments when we hit rock bottom, it's hard to imagine things getting better. I mean, some people, might fall into a deep depression and need some sort of therapy to get out of the pit that they're in. But the point is to remember that there is a way out and there's always light at the end of the tunnel. It just might take a while to find it. So let's go ahead and do the pronunciation exercise. We'll use the phrase, I think I just hit rock bottom. Repeat after me. I think. I think I just hit. I think I just hit rock bottom. I think I just hit rock bottom. And the conjugation. I hit rock bottom. You hit rock bottom. He hit rock bottom. She hit rock bottom. It hit rock bottom. We hit rock bottom. They hit rock bottom. Hit. Say this after me. Hit. 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 In most 
situations, if I'm speaking at a normal speed, you won't hear the T at the end of my hit. 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 My teeth don't even touch. Hit. Let me read some sentences for you. He hit me with the ball. He hit. He hit me with the ball. Hit me with the ball. He hit me with the ball. I accidentally hit the woman with my purse. I accidentally hit the woman with my purse. Hit the. Hit the. Hit the. Hit the. Hit the. I accidentally hit the woman with my purse. The boxer hit the punching bag. The boxer hit the, hit the punching bag. Pronouncing the T at the ends of words for some native speakers feels like extra work, particularly when a consonant follows. It slows down the sentence, so instead many choose to use a glottal stop, as I just did. It's when I push air out of my mouth and stop. Hit, hit, hit. Try laughing with me. Hit, 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 hit. Right? If you push the air out and you stop it. I don't think it's 100% necessary for all of you to get rid of the T's at the ends of words. That's not the point in teaching this. The point is, it's really common in native speech. And having that awareness that we do this can help with your comprehension. I know it's challenging to be able to create the glottal stop. The first step is recognizing it. So pay attention to the T's at the ends of words. That's it for this episode. If you liked it, I would love if you could give a five-star review in your favorite podcast player. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified about upcoming episodes. And as always, if you would like to learn more with every podcast episode, check out premium content. It is designed to help you learn with this podcast. Links can be found in the episode notes. Hope you're having a nice day and stay tuned until the next episode. All about irregular verbs and the Titanic. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.